I don't know if this is the best video for this, honestly. But I got to lay it out there sooner or later. Here we go. I'll put it in this KRV. For you guys who watch all the videos, you get the lowdown first. You get the information first. And you will learn about what I'm going to call a big programming note first here in TMP. Is that the best word for it? I don't know. I'll just go simple. I'll call it a big. It's not huge, but it's a big programming note that I'm going to put in record form. With this video right here right now you'll get the lowdown first so uh, good job clicking on the video here we go um and i think the best way to get past this is to be honest just to share it with you and here we go i'll i'll just show you what i wrote down um in regards to this as i'm calling it a big programming note yeah that is it that is a what i'm going to call a big programming note because it is on a larger note card it's not small this is one of those big ones not huge it's not like a poster board that's like totally overwhelming the reviewing table it's as you can see whatever four by six or whatever i mean i didn't put it on a small one if i had then it would have been you know maybe a smaller programming note less significant but this is i would say big it's a big programming note in regards to what's going on N-O-T-E, it is a note, it's on cardstock, it is a big programming note, and and there you go, administrative stuff done, a big programming note. Literally, that is it. That's not funny, nothing. It's not funny at all. You really had me going there. I thought something really awful was happening. Good job. You really psyched me out. And scene, done. Little acting again in the project. I do it infrequently. I should probably do it more. No, things are cranking along in the project. They're going great. Thanks to TMP Patreon, keeping me motivated, making the 40 plus hours a week worked for the project worthwhile. Join below, link below. Some people say, hey man, I haven't joined. I'm embarrassed to join this late. Now, come on over, it's never too late. Never too late. We have people joining all the time. Not a lot, a trickle. It's like less than 1% of TMPers belong to the TMP Patreon flow. And as long as it's there, I'll use it. If it crumps or something, who knows what's in the future. But while it's going, the content is rocking and rolling about four times what you see on the main channel. Go over to TMP Patreon. I'm talking all the content flow. Adventures, outdoor adventures, uh, four times as much. Gun reviews, four times as much. Knife reviews, Four times as much. Uh, goofy stuff like you just saw. Uh, half as much. <laughs> I don't know. I, I literally thought at the time all my content would go over to the A channel. It can't happen. I mean, I can only put like one video a week, maybe two videos a week on the A channel. It, 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 yeah, there's going to be videos that will never, ever post in uh, YouTube proper. It's just going to stay in the Patreon environment again while it's going. There you go. On we go with the knife show and we are rocking and rolling. Uh, and I'm really focusing, like I've said, on the CRKT brand because I like what I see. You know, as I cruise the TMP submarine at depth, once in a while I will raise it up to periscope depth, extend the periscope, look out on the horizon to see what the hell is going on. What is going on with all the knife manufacturers? I'll spend hours doing this. I'll click around, go to the website, go to vendors' websites, click around online, uh, reviews like an Amazon or something, just see what's going on. And uh, I like what I see with CRKT. Hey, that rhymes, that's pretty cool. I do, and so they're gonna get a lot of airplay now. I have a bunch of knives, and here we go with the Ken Onion Helical, guys. Oh my gosh, I really like this knife. Do I love it? Mm, pretty close, actually, pretty close. There are a couple things that I don't like about it, but that is pretty much the case with anything I bring to tabletop. Right, here it is, Ken Onion, I hope I'm saying it right, I think I am, helical. It's gonna be SKU number K500GXP, according to the box in right here. This is in satin finish, satin finished uh, gray 6061 aluminum handle. It does come in pure black, also a Tanto blade. There are different steels, which is pretty intriguing actually, that they're doing different steels. I don't know if this is a transition, that they're transitioning to a different steel or 
or this is just how they do it. But this is the inexpensive version. It features eight CR13 MOV steel, which I do like. And then the more expensive one, this one's about 45 bucks, very inexpensive, all subject to change. And then the more expensive one in D2 is about 60-ish, give or take, and it has a black blade. And I think the handle is a different color too. This is a Ken Onion designed helical. I really, really like it. We're gonna bounce into second corner here in a second. But on one of those excursions, when I raised up to periscope depth, and I was looking around at CRKT, and I do do it like once a year at least, several times a year at all the brands. Well, not all the brands, some of the brands. I did see some blades I liked. And it was last year that I reviewed this one. This is a CRKT Prowess purchased by, I would say a fair number of TMPers. They love this blade, bought it off my review. It's relatively inexpensive for what you're getting. Also an onion design. Do I always love his design language? Mm, I've talked about this. The answer is no. I don't think you do either. You don't like every song your favorite artist comes out with, do you? Generally not. I like most of his stuff, though. It's pretty cool. Organic, flowing lines. This is a kind of blade, or handle shape we've seen in a lot of Ken Onion designs. Uh, the Kershaw lineup is what I'm thinking of. So he has his own design language. This is the prowess. Uh, go watch that review. IKBS, good blade shape, deep carry pocket clip. Great blade. Great play for the money. So, you know, I retracted the periscope, went back to depth, uh, i.e. the other workload of all the other projects I got going in TMP, and I made a mental note, hey, come back to CRKT and see what's up. Here we are, happening right now with a helical. I said I'd start off a second cool, here it comes. Dudes, this blade is good looking. It attracts me. A blade has to be good looking, a watch has to be good looking for you to like it. And by the way, the watch for the review is, I gotta tweak my busted shoulder around for this. Oh my goodness, I gotta do it from this side. Not doing great, thanks for asking. Uh, hands modified, still wearing it because I love it. This is honestly so awesome. I bought it used off eBay. This is a Santo Heritage Pilot, or Vintage Pilot. So I had wear on it when I bought it. I, it was very inexpensive. That's a chronograph seconds hand. Uh, it attracted me uh, because I knew what it could be. The hands were jacked up, i.e. they were like shiny gold and then I transform them into what you see now. Go watch that watch review and get into watches. They're fun. Uh, so it has to attract you. That watch attracted me. I peered into the future uh, with my crystal ball, said, hey, I can make that watch more awesome. For the low price I'm gonna pay for it, you betcha. Uh, Helical's the same way. Not that it needs any modifications, it doesn't, but it looks good. It looks cool, has a good appearance. I like more and more the slim form factor in both EDC and tactical blades. There is a practical reason for me and my approach, my systems, my EDC systems, why I do that. And the main reason is because usually I have two knives in my pocket. Don't know if you know that, you should, if you've been watching the show. I carry like, if, if I'm like outside the house, I'm carrying like six blades. This is what I got today. I got a Spyderco Para. Yep, this is an orange from Cutlery Shop. Really cool, it's got a Lynch loop over pocket clip. Guys are always asking about that. Uh, I'll put a link below. They're at Blade HQ, titanium. They come in some really cool colors, blah, blah, blah. They're awesome. But anyways, this is in my pocket. And this is such a mid-sized knife. You really don't need to pair it with a, a tactical blade or an EDC, EDC blade. I've always said that about the Para. It's just perfectly sized. Compression lock, it's a great knife. But for whatever reason, I'm pairing it up with an AG Russell Double O, reviewed last night. And this, is, this has been modified by me. Speaking of gear modifications, here we go. So this is AG Russell, double O. It's overpriced for what it is. 9CR13 MOV. It's got my freaking sharp edge on it coming off the Edge Pro Apex. Just did it last night. Tightened up that jimping. Oh my gosh, the jimping's perfect on it. And uh, here we go. This is what I'm saying though, and this is actually a competitive option against the helical. Uh, see you later, Spyderco. Love you. I really do. I love Spyderco. But look, it's like the same size. It's the same form factor. And I raved about this knife because this is what I'm drawn to. This, by the way, looks very cool. Blue titanium, captured liner lock. We got G10 scales on the exterior. All the stuff I talked about. Good competitive option. Uh, this is less than half the price of this, though. Less. 45 bucks for the 8CR13. This is 125 without military discount. And this is available only at AG Russell, whom, by the way, I love. I love AG Russell stuff. They're awesome. 
back to the heel cool, second cool. I, I'm gonna start off too as we transition kind of first cool on the handle and how much I like how it looks. It's a non-chalky finish they have on this 6061, sadly steel-lined aluminum handle. Well, kind of sadly. I generally don't like it when they put an unnecessary steel liner in a knife, and you can see there's one here in the helical on this side, and it's not skeletonized. That's kind of a miss. And I say kind of because the weight is still reasonable at 3.5 ounces. That's a great weight. It is. But back to the coloration. It's fantastic. And the feel is fantastic. It's smooth. Just has a really cool um, streamlined feel to it. It does. In comparison to maybe a matte finishing that I will show you on this, we produced Farron Forge Crux. This is a Spartan Bronze. And this is a matte finishing on this titanium frame lock and it provides more traction, but it has a completely different appearance. Not in just color, but in finishing. I like the finish on the helical. Is it first cool? Is it like giving you traction to turn this into a tactical blade? No, it's not. This is gonna be a fun knife, an EDC blade. Uh, I still like it though. Not every knife has to have ultimate traction, right? The handle set is pretty sick, I like it. Now, I guess the name helical comes from the supposed twisted nature uh, they talk about it on their website of the handle. So apparently they want it to look like that the handle was put in uh, like a vice and twisted. Or I guess that's what this this flowing line is, is about. I say, okay, whatever. Uh, I, I know this, it looks organic and it looks like it, it fits. The whole machining of the handle, it works great. Really no hot spots towards the more, most important part of the blade back here. Li slightly more sharper up here as we look at the transition points. There's the back end. I think that is an aluminum backspacer right here on pretty much a flow through design on the helical. In hand, how does it feel? Talking about first cool stuff now. Uh, pretty good actually. You have kind of a guard here, slight indentation to protect your finger, give it more traction. Look at this here in just a second. It feels good. I don't notice any hot spots with a knife. I will say this, I didn't cut carpet with it for like six hours. You know, maybe if I did, I would think differently. There's your clip. Loop over pocket clip, adequately thick. There is a minor criticism I will level right here. I don't like it more and more when manufacturers do this, where they have the attachment screws and the stanchion, the mounting plate of the, of the clip right here. I'd prefer that it's, well, streamlined. So I can put on, you know, my thicker tactical pant pocket cloth into the clip without any obstruction. Let's see if I have a good representation of this. Yeah, we, here we go. Uh-oh, here's one right here. It's a competitive option. I bet you don't know what it is quite yet. We'll come back and visit it, but that's what I'm talking about. So make it a flush pocket clip attachment. Minor criticism, minor. Uh, here comes another one. Told you it had a couple drawbacks for me. Uh, I wish this was the same color as a handle. I don't like this polished clip on the helical. I just, I don't know. I know it matches a blade, but to me it just seems a little bit out of place with this kind of futuristic appearance. Minor, minor, I know, minor. Uh, single adjustment point on the helical. If you want to play around with your centering, usually that does not help. I'm just saying it doesn't. 420 stainless steel, steel nested liner. There's your timing on it. Just about right. Since it is a captured liner lock, no hyperextending right there. You can't do it. There have been complaints on the deployment of the Ken Onion helical. And they say that this flipper tab is too small. Mm, I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think it could be, you know, raised up a little bit. Uh, bringing out that ferrum again. This is almost a perfect flipper tab right here. At least height wise. You know, it's a little bit sharp sharp transition right here. I talked about that in the review, uh, but that's a good purchase point to initiate deployment. But that being said, I don't think any experienced knife person will have a problem deploying the helical. I don't get it. <clears throat> and by the way, I was in Amazon reading the reviews and in Amazon, you get this kind of kooky group thing going on and you really 
get the vibe the guys don't have a lot of knives that are talking and laying down the reviews. Some of them, some of them are really experienced, but others you go, holy crap, man, what's, what are these guys talking about? They're like shooting down this design for the flipper tab. Give me a break. Now I would probably take 400 grit stainless, uh, not stainless. I would probably take 400 grit sandpaper to that flipper tab, maybe smooth it out a little bit, but there's nothing obnoxious going on there. I think the deployment is okay. I wouldn't say it's like, amazing because it's not IKBS. It's not a ball bearing pivot point. And I did have to lubricate the pivot point with a precision oiler. This is some tough glide that came out of a gun cleaning kit that I've had for about 15 years. And that did help. So I just, you know, retracted the blade, put the needle oiler right here, right there. And that helped get it out. I wonder if those guys even try that. <laughs> Probably not. What? You have to lubricate your knife. Uh, well, kind of, sort of. You shouldn't have to do it. I'm not saying you should. They should get it right from the factory. Onto the blade. 3.5 inches in length. Two different steels. Once again, this is an 8CR 13 MOV. Love it. Well, like it a lot. For the money, I love it. Uh, and D2 is the other one on the blackened version of the helical. Uh, jimping on top. Uh, medium traction. They could have done a better job but it's there and I like that it's there. We have an unsharpened swedge on this Tanto blade. The blade thickness is 0.12 on the helical. Uh, too thick. I'm talking more and more about this, the blade thickness, because I just think it's gotten out of hand how thick they make blades, especially on an EDC knife like this. I would have liked it a little bit thinner. Again, a competitive option has it going on. I'll try to remember to bring that point out again. And then we have the Tanto blade, flat ground, satin finished. The edge on this is excellent, really good on the helical, really good. Here's what the other side looks like. Nice finishing on this. The machining on the whole blade is actually top notch. You would not know that this is a $45 knife. It almost presents like a semi-custom. It does. Uh, showed you the timing, showed you the deployment, uh, the lockup I didn't talk about specifically. It is tight. And I think I did, maybe I didn't show you this. Centering, retention, really good, really good. So just a couple minor criticisms on this uh, helical. I really like the knife. Now onto the tabletop decorations. <laughs> Before we go into combative options, just a couple, by the way. 164 scale, scale Firebird right here. This is one of the boys Gundams. Man, is it cool. I don't know which one it is. I don't waste memory space memorizing all the Gundam variations. Maybe I should. I don't. I think this is 1 to 144 scale. It's in a maintenance bay. It's very cool. It was in TD's room. Great tabletop, tabletop decoration. It's almost overwhelming to the review, right? It's just so dominating. Freaking Gundam there with double cannon. It's awesome. Patches at nuttingfancybigcartel.com. There's an LTC coin. Little tiny Firebird here. This is a, uh, what is this? A 152, ISU 152. Yeah, 172nd scale. There you go, tabletop decorations. Always doing it. It's fun to watch when I'm gonna swap in and out. By the way, the bunker is totally that way. I'm always showing you on the bunker some fun stuff. Okay, on to a few competitive options. I would not say that these are directly comparable. They're not, but it is what I have. <laughs> and so that's why you're gonna get to see them. Right, uh, I did show you the uh, AG Russell Double O. That I think that is actually a pretty good competitive option. By the way, I did put skateboard tape on it. Oh, by the way, I gotta show you how freaking sharp this thing is. I gotta do it. What is this, an insert for a Leatherman? That'll work. So this is really thick cardstock. This is after me sharpening it. Look at that, dude. And that is a thick blade. I mean, I had to work on the edge. I started with like 120 grit stone, went to 220. Went to 320, went to 600, then I went to 1,000 on this. It took me about 20 minutes. I don't know why I'm wasting time doing that. Oh yeah, I do. I do know. Because cutting stuff with knives is fun. That's why. Okay, so that's a competitive option. Kind of a weird one, I know. You may have never even heard of it. Uh, I had to search it out uh, to find out about it. Double O though, but I think it has the same four factor, like I said. I'll leave it on the table just for kicks. Now this one, even though it's from Bitch Made. Uh-oh. We still love the knife. It's the Osborne Axis. It's an interesting size comparison because a lot of you guys, I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job putting these in frame. A lot of you guys do have an Axis and so, an Osborne Axis is what I should say. Uh, so you know what size that is and that shows you what the size is on this one, the helical. Uh, love this knife still, love it, love it. Axis lock, 
still awesome. Love it, love it, love it. And the competitive option that I showed you earlier, did you figure out what it was? I bet you didn't. It is the Boker Plus Urban Trapper, y'all. Titanium frame lock. This is a production version. Uh, I think it's a Brad Zinker design, if I'm remembering right. Tanto blade. Interesting approach to the Tanto blade on the Urban Trapper. We have uh, kind of a, a plus up of material here, which makes it necessary to go with a very aggressive grind. And it has, again, the same form factor and actually the same blade style as the helical. So it's a great comparison. In build, this is much lighter, uh, much thinner actually, as, as you can tell, and much more expensive. This, well, not much more, probably double this one. I think you can get this, hate to say a price, uh, 80 to 100, I think, on this Urban Trapper. It's VG10 steel. I love it. The only ding I can say is this, either you're talking about this one or the FR, the Boker Plus FR, which I have behind me. Their clips are delicate. You're going to have to bend them in position. Uh, Kershaw Atmos. Atmos, Atmos, Atmos. This one right here, dudes. Reviewed and beloved. Very inexpensive knife. Amazingly inexpensive. A super lightweight handle. Here's a great design where they didn't mess it up with a steel liner inside. Great job. CF. I think that's genuine CF inlay on this one. 8CR on the blade. Good jimping on top. It weighs nothing. Perfect loop over clip. And it's maybe not perfect in its approach here, but it's less obtrusive than this one, the CRKT helical. And that's the end of competitive offerings that I have in stock. <laughs> well, I'm, t I'm looking for an elongated form factor here. I mean, there's some that are no. close, but the video is going to go like 45 minutes if I keep babbling on. Uh, that being said, I think the quibbles I have against the CRKT helical are minor. They really are. I think it's a fantastic design. Uh, congratulations, Ken Onion. I really, really love this knife. Uh, I would totally recommend you purchasing this. I would probably j just go for the inexpensive uh, 8CR version. This one right here, uh, the finishing on it is perfect. The steel will suit you just fine for any reali realistic use. I think it can function also if we talk philosophy of use as a collectible, uh, a high value collection. I think you're gonna really enjoy playing with it and just you know, carrying it day to day. It's a different knife design. I don't think it's that thick, really. I mean, I forgot to show you the thickness against the Osborne Axis. There you go, a little bit thicker. Uh, quibbles, uh, I talked about the clip attachment and I kind of wish they would have milled this out or not put in a stainless steel liner in there at all. Uh, the rest is pretty good. It really is. It's highly recommended. And uh, that ends my programming notes. <laughs> Nothing fancy.